Let's be honest, if you've ever tried to grow anything in heavy clay soil, you know the struggle, the shovel sticks, water pools instead of draining, and roots twist and stall before they can ever stretch. You can pour on compost, dig until your back gives out, and still end up with plants that look like they're fighting for air. But what if I told you there's a simple, science-backed soil hack that can transform compacted clay into a living, root-driven powerhouse, a system so effective it can increase root mass up to 10 times? Not a gimmick, not a quick-fix chemical, but a soil engineering method used in professional horticulture, adapted for home and small-scale gardeners. Today we're breaking down exactly how to unlock 10 times root growth in clay, the miracle soil hack that turns concrete hard dirt into the most fertile foundation your plants have ever known. Clay soil isn't bad. It's a bony the spot fin sen dime one stin ab datstam dari den darin. On it's misunderstood, clay gets a bad reputation, but in reality, it's one of the richest soil types when it comes to minerals and nutrient holding capacity. The real problem isn't fertility, it's structure. Clay particles are extremely fine, which means they pack together tightly, leaving almost no pore space for oxygen or drainage. Roots suffocate, microbial life declines, and every watering becomes a guessing game between drought and drowning. To fix this, the goal isn't to remove the clay, it's to re-engineer its structure. That's where this miracle soil hack comes in. Instead of replacing clay with sandy mixes or piling on compost endlessly, we use the clay's strengths and correct its weaknesses through biological and structural transformation. Here's the science in simple terms. Clay particles carry a negative charge which causes them to bind tightly together. To break that compaction, you need two things, organic carbon and a calcium-based flocculant. When introduced together, they cause clay particles to clump into larger aggregates, a process called flocculation. This increases pore space, oxygen flow, and water infiltration while creating a home for root-supporting microbes. The easiest way to achieve this is by combining a rich organic material such as well-finished compost or worm castings, with a calcium source like gypsum, which is calcium sulfate. Gypsum works without altering soil pH, unlike lime, and it's safe for virtually all plants. Here's the ratio that works like magic in clay. For every one square meter of clay soil, apply 2 kilograms of compost and 150 grams of gypsum, mixing the top 15 centimeters of soil. Water it in thoroughly. Within weeks the clay begins forming friable clumps rather than sticky plates. This reaction not only opens the soil physically but also wakes up dormant microbes that thrive in the new aerated structure. Once the soil begins to open biology does the real heavy lifting. The secret to long-term transformation is to establish a living microbial network that maintains aggregation and feeds roots continuously. You can supercharge this by introducing what's called a microbial accelerator a mix of compost tea or a homemade biostimulant. A proven method is to brew a compost tea using one cup of worm castings, one tablespoon of unsulfured molasses, and four liters of non-chlorinated water. Aerate it for 24 hours with an aquarium pump or by stirring several times. After that you'll want to apply it directly to the soil after the gypsum compost mix. This introduces beneficial bacteria and fungi that secrete glues, like glomalin, Compounds that physically bind soil particles together, improving structure far more effectively than tilling ever could. Within two to three weeks, you'll notice soil that used to clump into sticky masses now breaks apart easily in your hands. That's living structure forming, the kind of environment where roots multiply rapidly. Now that the topsoil is opening, we need to ensure roots can penetrate deeper than 15 or 20 centimeters. Clay subsoil tends to seal off below that layer, preventing deep water and nutrient access. Instead of mechanical tilling, we mimic nature's engineers. Plant roots. The best biological subsoilers are plants with strong tap roots like daikon radish, alfalfa, or crimson clover. When sown thickly and left to grow for a full season, these plants drill down through compacted clay, creating vertical air and water channels that remain even after the roots decay. For practical ratios, broadcast 200 grams of daikon radish seed per 100 square meters in late summer or early fall. When the plants die back, leave the residue to decompose in place. 
This feeds organic carbon deep into the profile, setting up permanent root pathways for the next crop. By the next season, your main crop's roots will follow those decayed radish tunnels down into moist, mineral-rich zones that were previously unreachable. That's where the real 10 times effect happens. Clay's water-holding capacity can be a gift if managed right. The key is to maintain aeration while preserving consistent moisture levels. Once structure improves, add a 2-3 to three centimeter mulch layer of organic material, shredded leaves, straw, or aged bark. This regulates temperature and slows evaporation but more importantly, it prevents the surface from sealing during rain. Avoid heavy foot traffic or machinery on moist clay, since compression can reverse weeks of progress. If you're building raised beds, maintain at least 30 centimeters depth of amended clay base before topping with lighter loam mixes. This prevents the bathtub effect, where water gets trapped between soil layers. For gardeners who want lasting structural improvement, Biochar is the underused secret weapon. Unlike compost which eventually decomposes, biochar remains stable for decades, providing permanent microhabitats for soil microbes and locking carbon into the ground. When charged with nutrients, it acts like a slow-release sponge, balancing clay's natural density. To prepare it correctly, mix one part biochar with one part compost and moisten lightly for two weeks before applying. Then spread one kilogram per square meter and work it into the top 10 centimeters. This combination creates a soil environment that drains freely yet retains moisture evenly, the perfect balance for explosive root growth. In field trials conducted across the southern United States and parts of Australia, both regions with notoriously heavy clay, this combination of gypsum, compost, and biochar increased root biomass in vegetable crops by an average of 8 to 12 times over untreated controls within a single growing season. Crops like tomatoes and peppers developed root systems that penetrated twice as deep, improving drought resistance and nutrient uptake dramatically. Gardeners often report that even the physical feel of the soil changes. Instead of sticky clods, it becomes crumbly and rich with visible fungal threads. Earthworms move in quickly, a natural sign that the biological system has reset. Once you've achieved the transformation, maintenance is simple. Reapply compost at a rate of 1 kg per square meter once a year, ideally before planting season. Continue using light applications of gypsum every two years if your soil tends to recompact and keep surface mulch in place. Encourage deep-rooting cover crops every third season to rebuild channels and prevent compaction. Avoid unnecessary tilling. It breaks apart the delicate fungal networks that maintain structure. Instead, use a broad fork, or simply layer organic matter on top and let biology do the mixing. Within two seasons, what began as lifeless sticky clay becomes a dynamic, living soil capable of supporting heavy feeders like tomatoes, fruit trees, and perennials without constant amendments. The roots you see will be thicker, deeper, and more fibrous, capable of extracting moisture long after the surface has dried. This resilience means less watering, fewer nutrient losses, and far stronger plant performance across every season. This isn't a miracle in the mystical sense. It's soil science, applied. Correctly. By combining structural chemistry, organic matter, and living biology, we turn clay's weaknesses into its greatest strength. If you've been battling heavy clay and wondering if it can ever become truly fertile, the answer is yes, and you don't need expensive products or endless backbreaking digging to do it. Follow these ratios, trust the process, and you'll see the transformation within a single growing cycle. I've seen this approach work for small backyard gardens, large vegetable plots, and even compacted orchard soils that hadn't grown anything in years. It's the kind of fix that lasts because it works with the soil, not against it. If you found this guide valuable, subscribe to the Soil Engineer channel for more professional-grade soil science made practical. Share this video with a gardener who's ready to unlock the full power of their clay soil. And together, let's rebuild our soil from the roots up.